everybody. It's Kate Richberg. And, you know, I just can't beat that entrance that Candy made <laughs> on her broadcast. I don't know about all y'all. I don't have a canoe or a kayak or a, uh, or a river, but that was really awesome. Wasn't that a really great broadcast? Candy, a great way to kick off this weekend. Well, hey, everybody, I'm Kate Richberg, and welcome to my segment on the great bead extravaganza. It's great to have you all here. You know, we're broadcasting uh, all over the social media um, on all of the bead shop groups, also YouTube, the great bead extravaganza YouTube, the Kate Richburg YouTube stuff and everything. So we are going out all over the place. If you join a little bit later or you're joining on the rebroadcast or the, the, the broadcast after the live is finished, welcome. Thank you all so much. Uh, this is, I don't know how many great beat extravaganzas this is. You know, we started it in 2020 um, and now uh, here we are right? Uh, all these years later, still going strong. So it's great to have all of you all here with us. So today, thank you for these earrings. You know, I made these on our broadcast. You can catch me every Wednesday and Friday on all of the beadshop.com socials. These are our chakra beads. So I used the tassels from the chakra strands and I made two earrings, I, what I call cousins, not twins, so half the colors are on one side, half the colors are on the other. And then I have one extra floating around I'm going to do something with. So you folks loved the project that I did uh, so much, right? Uh, the kit, the adventure bracelet kit that they, they sold out. I mean, super fast. And I made a bunch. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. So I went... And yesterday I scrambled around, <clears throat> pardon me, and I made another project really similar to what I did with the adventure bracelet, right? And so I listed it, right? So you have that. So uh, we're getting, let me add this, my second um, camera to the stream here so you can see what I'm talking about. This was the adventure bracelet. I had them in three different colorways um, and those sold out. Luckily, Janice and I, we kind of guessed that you folks would love this wide leather, right? So we have it coming. We're introducing a new line of the 20 millimeter leather. It's gonna be in, in a few weeks, two to three weeks. We're having it made just for us. So colors that we've chosen and everything. So they're manufacturing it, it's coming. We'll get it in the shop and it'll go out in the newsletter when it's listed. So don't worry if you missed it and you're like, man, come on, it'll be in there and you'll be able to choose your own. In the meantime, if you go to the homepage on beadshop.com, you'll see I uh, did this new one and I named it Bronte. You know, we had this discussion on Friday if you watch the broadcast that I named these adventure bracelets after adventurous, adventuresome women authors. Well, I couldn't choose just one Bronte sister, so I named it after all three of them. So Anne, Charlotte, and Emily, this one is for you, okay? And I'm gonna show you a little bit behind the scenes about how I put this together. It's comprised of five millimeter strap leather, and there's a list on the page. If you go right to the home page, you click it, um, you'll see uh, it'll take you to this page that Janice has just linked. And if you scroll down into the notes below the project, it'll take you, it lists each category that I used. Up above, you'll see the exact things that I used here. So this is a great warm up. I don't know, I, I don't know if I like it better, but I like it just as much, right? So I used the red leather because I felt that the Brontes had kind of like that quiet fire, right? Underneath, which I love. Um, and I used the shadow beads in brass, same one I'm gonna use today for the Louisa. 
I used the opal, the copper lined opal ADOT seed bead um, in there. So I, and, and then the cool Luke clasp. And I'm going to show you how I navigated putting these two uh, strands together and stuff. So I'm going to show you that because surprise, it's actually not quite finished yet. So I'm going to show you how I do that in just a second. Um, but let's get to this 20 millimeter because you can put this, let me go ahead and spotlight uh, real quick. But before I do, let me do my due diligence here and say a big uh, happy welcome to all of you all who are joining. If you watch us regularly, you know you can find us on all of our socials, Facebook, Insta, Pinterest, like and subscribe our beadshop.com uh, YouTube channel. We have a great uh, uh, broadcast that shows up every Wednesday and Friday at 1030 a.m. Pacific. If you have questions, shoot us an email right at info at beadshop.com. And don't forget, folks, this weekend we are having a great bead extravaganza store-wide sale. You can use coupon code TGBE20 at checkout, and it'll knock 20% off everything in the store, including all of the supplies for the Bronte kit, that I are not kit, but the Bronte project that I pulled together for you, as well as everything on the site. Okay, so uh, thank you all for that. So let me highlight this, solo this, and let's get into it. Let me have another, oh, another uh, bracing drink of coffee here. Let's get me started. Um, <clears throat> oh, Isabel, I need to look at this. I'm so distracted. You must name one after Isabella Bird, a Victorian who visited the Rockies along with various countries in Southeast Asia. I am going to look her up. I love a new adventuresome woman, especially from, um, uh, especially, uh, from history. I love it. All right. So let me get some... Uh, let me get this started. I know you all have questions about everything. So let me jump in here. So this is the Laura bracelet that I did uh, yesterday. There we go. Am I, am I caught up? Yeah, I think I am. Sorry, my camera is lagging behind just a little bit. There we go. I think I've just caught up. So here is the Laura that I did yesterday on the broadcast. And if you remember, we played around with some different beads to kind of embellish what was going on. So you can see I added some A dots at the end. These didn't come in the kit and some Miyuki drops right here. Okay. And you can see on the back, I didn't add the drops. I just added the A dots there. Okay, so, and this is a nice 20 millimeter clasp. It's a nice heavy, not heavy bracelet, but it's a nice say something bracelet. Let me pull the, the zoom back just a little bit here. I'm also wearing, I put this one on the homepage. This is called a uh, shade. It's a variation on my Kate's favorite. And I thought that all of these bracelets that I'm wearing, this is a really cool wrap bracelet. I thought that all of these bracelets that I was doing really pair up kind of nicely for a giant stack, right? Like this. This one, go check out the shade uh, bracelet. Again, I put it on the homepage on Bead Shop. It links to the project and it's a great companion piece for these, okay? So when you get your kit, um, and when you eventually order for this project further on down the road, you're going to get a length of 20 millimeter strap leather. This is the blue. This one comes from the Louisa kit. Okay. And so um, I chose brass. This is what we call our little shadows. It's a little, what we call a, a, a cube, a faceted cube bead. And it's about the same size as an A dot seed bead. So you're going to get the leather. You're going to get the 20 millimeter clasp. You're going to get um, some KO thread. I tossed it all over here. You're going to get the blue one. You're going to get it in the denim. I'm just going to keep using the gray that I've been using like for the past few days. Um, and of course, you're going to get a strand of the shadow, 
the little shadows beads. Now I used one complete strand and that gives us, uh, let me measure for you. Um, that gives us about 35 millimeters of beads or about an inch and a half here. Okay. So to start out, this is peyote stitch, right? And so the peyote stitch, it's peyote in the round. Um, you're also going to need, before I forget, some zap glue. You also get the needles in your kit as well. But if you're um, getting this, you know, separately, you're going to need some needles and thread and some zap right here. If you wanted to add the Miyuki drops or the ADOTs, you can go ahead and just choose your own that you like. Okay. So what I've done to start this off is I've strung 24 of the little shadows beads onto my thread. And I learned and JP thanks for the question about the five millimeter I'm going to go ahead I'm going to discuss this one separately so I don't get confused but I'm going to tell you everything about this as well okay so hang tight with that uh so this um right here is about 24 inches and if I learned anything from the broadcast yesterday I learned to thread my needle off camera <laughs> right. So this is just one strand of the little shadows right here. Single one strand. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to leave myself a little bit of a tail here. Sorry, working gray on gray. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to place my strap leather in here and I haven't cut my strap leather down. We give you a foot in the kit so you'll have extra. Um, but you'll use, you know, depending on your wrist size, somewhere between seven and eight inches, probably, because the clasp adds about an inch. So uh, I'm going to bring that uh, strand around that I've strung, that little 24 beads, and I'm going to tie a square knot. And see, I can even do it right there on the front. See, square knot, right over left, left over right. And I want it to be nice and tight, right? So it goes all the way around like this. So I, I'm going to give it one more. No, it's tight enough. I'm not going to worry. Okay. So you know, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit without degrading my focus. So let me know if that's okay for you. The focus might be a little a little off. Let me uh, pull my camera, pull my camera down just a little. Thanks for bearing with me. And I'm going to zoom out just a hair. That might be a little bit better. A little bit better. Um, okay. So here are my 24 beads around. Now these 24 beads are the first two rows of peyote stitch. Right. So if you haven't done peyote in the round, it's an even amount of beads that go all the way around, right, or into a, a, a tube or a, into a circle. And the mantra for this is we're going to put on a bead, which is here. I'm going to skip a bead, which is this one. And we're going to go through a bead. Okay, so now when I tighten it, that bead that I put on displaces the bead below it. Okay, over on beadshop.com, we've got some really great uh, skill builders and basics. If you go to our seed bead school section, we've got some peyote stitch basics. Peyote stitch is really the first seed bead stitch that I learned and the one that I used for many, many years. Okay, so we're just gonna keep going. I'm gonna actually move my beadwork rather than moving my leather, okay? So pick up a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. And you don't want that first uh, loop of beads that you made to be too tight or else it's going to be kind of hard for you 
to um, there we go to get your bead in place. Oh, you know what? I didn't do that right. I went through the wrong bead. Let me go back through. I'm going to go eye of the needle first. It's a big no-no, but I'm going to do it anyway. That's the bead I should have skipped, and I go through the next one. There we go. <clears throat> See that? It's piled just so when I come around with the next row, there's that little hole that I'm ready to put my bead in. I'm going to try and speed up a little bit and go Kate speed here. Okay, as I do my peyote stitching, I'm moving the beads. You can also just move the leather, put on a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. So we're just, whoops, come here bead. Peyote stitch is really uh, relaxing, I think. Really a fun and easy stitch. And it really carried me through all of my seed bead needs for a long time. You know, you can do peyote stitch. So you want to be careful. This is what happens. It gets caught around the leather. Um, you can do like a freeform peyote stitch. You can do flat peyote. You can do peyote in the round. Um, it's really a versatile and pretty seed bead stitch, and I'm glad that you agree with me that you like it. And if you haven't tried it, you know, get yourself some large beads, maybe some six aughts, maybe. Um, they're a little bit larger, and just do a little practice tube. You don't even need to put it around leather. Just do some peyote stitch in the round, right? And those larger beads will help you kind of see where everything should be. Whoops. Put on a bead, skip a bead. That's this one. And go through a bead right there. So we're almost to where I need to jump up to the next row. Okay. So uh, it's a really good question, Marion. Will the shadows get glued down? Hang on and I'll show you. Okay. So uh, I'm going to put on a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. And you know what? If your start is wonky, you guys, no big deal. Just cut it off and do it again. But if you warm up with another bead, like a six odd or something, and make a little practice run, then you'll be all ready to go. Okay. So here is where we step up. Okay, so I'm coming out of this bead. I'm going to skip this bead. Now I'm going to step up and I'm going to go through that bead. And now I'm ready to continue my next round. Okay, so I'm going to go. Sometimes these like to twist a little bit. So I'm going to untwist them as I do my second row. So bear with me here just a second while I do this. So we're going to continue on and get that shadow bead. When you look at these little metal beads that you're putting on, these are all hand machined, these beads. So not every single bead is going to be the exact same size. Okay, so... Um, so it looks like I've got an extra bead here. Okay, so let me show you how I'm going to deal with this. All right. Um, I've got, oh no, that that's right, I think. I don't know. I'm just going to keep pressing on. You can kind of fix it on the fly. So there's my space. This bead doesn't want to sit nicely, but it will when I get a bead through there. There we go. Yep, it all, see, it all worked out. It was just a little wonky and it needed me to tell it to behave. So it's fine. There's my space. Pick up a bead, go through a bead. Bam, there we go. It was fine. Everything was fine. Once you get past this third row, you're going to have a little bit of an easier going. But like I said, each of these beads has been machined. And so they might vary in size 
just a bit. Okay, so um, you may want to reject anything that's super skinny. Like, see this one right here? Can you see that? That one's super skinny. Right. Terry's asking, is this best for Japanese seed beads or can you use check beads as well? Sorry, we've got a plane going over. You might hear that. Um, I think you could use either because these shadows aren't super uniform in size. So the peyote stitch is going to look a little maybe organic, but as long as your tension is good, um, you'll be fine. All right, there we go. So now I want to show you, I'm going to come around and I want to show you, we're just going to start our next, our next one. There we go. And we're just going to keep going around. Okay. So let me show you, I'm going to add a row of a dots here so you can see that. Now the A dots that I'm going to add, I'm going to use the 8-4242. I love an opal silver lined. I think this is silver lined aqua maybe. Let me get rid of that small one. Let me give myself a few more of these beads. I'm going to go around and then I'll turn it. I'm going to add these seed beads here. Let me turn this around. Okay. This is where you can see I've stopped. This is my start spot because I have to step up. I go through. I've gone through that bead. I'm going to step up here. And I'm going to go back to my start. That may be where I had that little bit of an issue, but I'm good to go here. Okay, so let's add some A dots just so you can see what this might look like. Okay. So here is my first A dot. And you can intermix these if you want. I did them on the edge. I'll take my bracelet off so you can see it. But the A dots and the shadows are really a, a good fit for each other. The A dots, if you grab the kit, A dots don't come in the kit, but you can shop. We have a huge selection of Miyuki Japanese A dot beads. You can choose your favorite color. You can shop by color. You can sort them all different ways, however you like but I like how this blue plays against the brass. Let me get in here. I'll go around my one, and then we'll talk about some sizing and other things here. The other cool thing I like about Peyote Stitch is you can work from either side. Okay, so, and I'll show you what I mean about that. So let me just get this one on. Let me get a few more of these out. And what I might do if I'm putting these A dot beads in my design, I might want a stripe of these. Yeah, there's my ending. Good. Right there. Great. So, whoops. That's the one thing about this project is sometimes it goes around that leather and it's a little irritating. There we go. Okay, so here's my design. Right here, okay? This Miyuki number, it's 8-4242, okay? Right here. And you can... Um, uh, search 8-4242 right on the website and this one will come up or you can shop by color but what you could do is you could make a small little stripe of beads like this and then go back to shadows or make a heavier stripe 
So maybe what I want to do, let me get that a little more in the center. Maybe what I want to do is just go back to shadows to have just a little hint of color in here, right? Instead of being heavy handed with it. And I'll show you the bracelet that I have on. See, once peyote, once you get it established, there's just that little space that you can just fly that bead right through. You could also make, instead of one big heavy strip or long inch and a half strip, you could make smaller strips, right, of beads that float along this. doesn't have to be one. It could be multiples. I just want you to do you when you are creating this design. Again, this, this blue one is the Louisa, named after one of my favorite all-time authors, Louisa May Alcott. Um, Elaine, uh, Elaine, you're asking, are you going to get more of the 20 millimeter strap? We sure are. We have ordered a whole new line in. Janice and I chose the colors. And we're getting not only 20 millimeter strap, but we're also getting it in four millimeter round, which I think you're going to love. We're also getting it in fresh five millimeter braided. So you bet. Um, we were chatting about the new colors yesterday on the broadcast and someone asked, I can't remember who it was. What about turquoise? So Janice and I had a conversation <clears throat> yesterday and we said, uh-oh, we better order some turquoise. So we have turquoise. We've got a new batch of colors that we're going to be ordering in. So you'll see a second wave after we debut our five colors uh, to start. So I'm really glad that you folks like them. Let me see if I can get this one through this last one. Here we go. So let's take a look at this. So you can see here how I have started to get that pretty color in there, those lines of color. Um, another good question about this, Terry's asking, will the strap leather be sold by the yard or will it be pre-cut? The This leather, this 20 millimeter in your kit, um, you will get a foot in your kit. When we sell it, we're going to sell it by the meter. It comes pre-cut. We tried to get it um, in um, continuous yardage, but they just don't make it that way. It, they just don't. So we're getting it by the meter. Okay. So, uh, so that's it. I also like this color worked in here. I think it looks really cool. Let me take this one off here. Um, and show you, I had the, uh, I did that color, uh, stripe of the a dot and then, yeah, I can zoom in closer or let me hold it up. It might be better. It might focus a little bit better that way. Okay. Can you see that there? And I'll put up the blue one. <laughs> Barbara, you're saying a rose in bloom is one of your favorites. I, too, love the Eight Cousins Rose and Bloom series. It's so tender. I don't know. There's no other word for it than that, right? I love it. Um, okay, so the Louisa, what I put on the Louisa is the 8-4242. The color that I put on the Laura was the 8-4703, okay? Um, let me also take this bracelet off while I've got you here, and then we're gonna look at the Bronte, okay? And we're gonna do some gluing. Let me see if I can get this off. You've seen me wear, I used to wear it all the time, now it sits in my jewelry box because I don't <laughs> go out as much since my office now is at home. Um, but this one is a, a, um, a riff on what we call the Kate's favorite. Let me, um, 
zoom out just a little bit here. There we go. Um, and this is a wrap. I think it goes really nicely, partners really nicely with these um, adventure bracelets. And you can see I've done some laddering. The whole project is on Bead Shop. It's on the homepage right now, so you can watch the broadcast. I've done some macrame with leather. This I've done with 1.5 millimeter leather. This is the, the laddering using a piece of leather in between. These are the regular shadows. So this I think is also a really uh, stunner of a piece that mixes nicely with this. So speaking of mixing nicely, let's move to uh, the Bronte here, that bonus project that I made up for you because I knew that you weren't going to be super pleased with me because there were no kits. <laughs> you folks bought them all. But this is, I think that's a good thing because you get this cool little bonus one. And those of you who didn't um, grab the kit before it sold out, the 20 millimeter is coming back. But this is a good placeholder for you um, to do until that happens. So the clasp that I used, it's called, we call it the cool loop. It's a 10 millimeter, okay? And I've used two uh, straps of the five millimeter uh, leather here. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay. And I have two pieces here that are left over. So what I did was I did the same thing. I measured the beads around the two millimeter, uh, uh, the two five millimeter straps. And let me just count this for you to tell you how many I put on. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. I think I put 14 beads on to go all the way around. Okay. And then I started the peyote stitch. And as I was doing it, the two straps of leather, trying to go around two straps, I was just, come on now. They were going all over the place. They weren't staying. So what I did was I just slid the piece off and I made the peyote section in a tube, okay, like this. And you could just make these beads like this, right? They could go on anything. They don't have to go on this leather. They could go on a, on a necklace or whatever. Look at how just luscious this is just as a bead like that, okay? So <clears throat> what I did then was I finished it. This, the whole strand will give you probably a little under about three inches of beading. This gives you about an inch and a half, and I used about half the beads. Then I went and I used the copper lined opal to do the ends. So it was kind of like a ruffle. You know, I picture like the Bronte sisters, like when they change into afternoon dresses, maybe they had a ruffle at the end of their cuff, right? like that. Um, that might be cool. I don't know. Uh, that That's what I felt like this would look, uh, that, that this imitated. So um, that's why I chose that color. So now I had to get it back on the strap leather, right? So what I did was, and it was kind of walking all over the place. So what I did, let me clear the decks here, and I'm going to show you how I did it just on these little pieces of leather. Let me get a a plastic baggie so I don't get glue all over everything. And I got my zap glue. And what I needed to do was just glue the leather a touch, you know, not a lot, but just maybe like three eighths of an inch or, you know, maybe even a half an inch together. And that will keep the leather together while you finish it off. So I've got my zap. Zap doesn't come in the kit. Okay. Um, so you need to get the zap um, separately. You could use E6000, but I prefer zap because it's kind of viscous. It's a little thick. It stays where you put it and it cures very quickly. So see, I put the zap on. Let me put the lid on so it doesn't go everywhere. Now, I'm going to get a toothpick, 
And I want to try, I'm going to spread that zap out just a bit so it's not so puddly. Now, obviously these are long strands, right? So I'm going to put these two together and I'm going to hold it there for just a second. Sherry, I love it. You're saying your husband always asks, do we have to watch a romantic period film again? The answer to that question is always yes. 100%. I just watched The Pride and Prejudice with Keira Knightley and um, uh, Matthew, uh, it's not Matthew McConaughey. Uh, 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 it'll come to me. But the not the the miniseries, not the penultimate with um, or the ultimate, not penultimate, with Colin Firth and Jennifer Erla, but um, the Kira Knightley version, which I also love. So yes, um, Melanie, I don't know if Loctite would work. Honestly, I don't use Loctite only because we don't we don't really carry it, and I use the Zap because that's what I'm used to using. Um, but you can try it as long as it sets up quickly. And it uh, is kind of viscous, so it'll, you know, it'll grab. So you can see, it's a pretty neat glue job. You can see, see that? It's, it's, I'm not going to pull it apart, but you can see it's connected there. So it's nice. Uh, Matthew McFadden. Thank you, Sally. Matthew McFadden. He is a gift to humanity. I just love that guy. Um so you can see I have glued these together in the center here. This is a little messier than I want it to be, but it's covered about uh, with the with the the bead will be there. And then what I did was I attached, I added a bit of the glue here on the end, and I'm going to glue this one after I put the bead on. And then I go into the clasp this way. Now this clasp is going to add, let me show you, the interior of the clasp, can you see? It's about a quarter of an inch there. And on the other side here, it's also a quarter of an inch. So you need to have extra so it goes inside there so that your bracelet isn't too small. This one measures this length measures about 20 millimeters, but you want to take that, it goes in mm, about four and a half millimeters or so, right? So um, this other one, the 20 millimeter, it measures about 21 and a half millimeters, right? So what I do to measure this correctly, I'll show you, and I do that with this one as well. I'm going to slide on my uh, first, what I do is I glue on my clasp on one end, okay, like this. Then I'll add these two. Now, sometimes you have to kind of lay them one on top of the other, but that's okay because you'll slide it on to where it's glued and you'll hold them together like that, right? So it's there. Now, what I do is I wrap it around and I check the length, right? I make a little mark and I cut this side so that it's going to fit me. And what you can also do at this point, sometimes it's a little hard to do, but I do that with this one as well, with the longer one. I'm going to come in and I'm going to smush, that's a technical term, flatten your leather just a touch so that when it goes into your clasp, it'll go in a little easier. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to add glue in there. So I love it. I also love old movies. My mom and I, nothing we love better than watching an old movie. Now Voyager. I had Now Voyager on the other day with the uh, Betty Davis and Paul Henry, one of my favorite movies of all time. So see here, I can check this length before I glue. Okay. So I know that that's good. So now I'm ready to glue it. This bead tube could be rotated. You could slide it. You could rotate it a bit. 
but I don't know that you would want to disturb the threads that much, but you can try it. You can make it a little um, looser if you want, right? And it would rotate maybe a little bit better. Um, same thing for the end of this one, right? Here's that big clasp. Where did it go? Where did my 20 millimeter clasp go? My 21 millimeter. Wasn't it just here? Let me move this. Oh, here it is. So you'll pull, put this on and you kind of have to wedge it right in there. Do this. Okay. You'll glue it on, let that set. Then if you've worked this off the leather, you can slide it back on. As your piece gets a little longer, it also becomes uh, a little tighter around your leather here as the, this piece gets wider, okay? Then you'll measure it, you'll cut, and then you'll glue this other side in. So let me glue this other side for you so you can see it. I love how we're all talking old movies and doing beadwork all at the same time. You all are my kindred spirits. I love it. Um, Nothing better than beating in a good movie. Yeah, that dress that she wears, uh, Betty Davis wears as Margot that night when she has the cocktail party. Um, that dress, I think in real life, in black and white, you can't tell what color it is, but I think in real life, I think it's emerald green. Um, and it's one of the biggest desires of my heart to have one of those dresses and to hold a martini and um, tell everybody to buckle up. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Um, so here I'm going to add some zap on the end. I'm going to grab my clasp end. And I always keep these uh, together, right? Um, connected so that I don't accidentally put it on upside down. Okay. So many of you are watching from so many sources, so many social sources across the web. We really appreciate you being here. Um, you can catch my broadcasts during the week every Wednesday and Friday at 1030 a.m. Pacific. You can go right on to beadshop.com let me actually do these one at a time, to beadshop.com, there we go, and um, sign up for our newsletter so you can stay in touch. This has a little funny place at the end. I didn't retrim them. I didn't check it. So even though this glue is kind of setting up, I'm going to clip that. There we go. I'm going to add a little more glue. Zap sets up super quickly. So you have to have the courage of your convictions with this, right? I want to be pretty clean on this too. I don't want to get a bunch of glue on my project, but there we go. I'm going to open this up now like so, and I'm just going to make sure that everything is in there. <clears throat> nice and tight. There we are. Done. Okay. So I'm going to let that sit for just a second. I haven't glued my fingers too badly. But you can see it's all ready it's all ready to go. Okay. Now you could, we also carry a, um, a, a five millimeter clasp. So if you wanted to do this bracelet with just a single strand, get the five millimeter. Okay. Um, get the five millimeter clasp and just one single five millimeter strand and just make the, the uh, peyote stitch bead fit that right? So it all, it all works out. So let me pull this one out. Maybe I'll round it up there. I don't know. Maybe I'll hold it like this. 
this one here, you can see the Kate's favorites are also here. Okay, so I hope that um, that that works out for you. Now you can use. There's a couple of questions about check seed beads. You could do this whole thing with check, right? You don't have to use the metal shadows. But let me jump over. I'm going to share the screen real quick on our website, just so you can see where everything lives. So. Bear with me here just a second. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share. I'm going to go to beadshop.com and share it right here. Okay, so here I am. Here I am. Here's the project down below. And you can see that's the photo that I took this very morning right <laughs> over there before I went on the broadcast. You can see there's the Bronte. And if you click it, that'll take you to uh, the listing um, the Adventure Bracelet TGBE Bonus Project. And if you scroll down, you'll see everything that I've used. And if you scroll down a little further, I've got um, uh, links to just the general, um, uh, what do I want to call it, categories. So you can see all of the different leathers that we carry and choose the leather that you like there. Uh, let me go back here. You can choose, I've gone to the 10 millimeter magnetic clasps. You can see all of the 10 millimeter clasps we carry there. Um, we can also take off that, um, that uh, search and you can look at magnetic clasps five millimeter for leather and all of the five millimeter ones show up here. Okay, uh, you can also see, let me go right back down scroll down. Don't forget to take that 20% off store-wide this weekend using coupon code TGBE20. I'm going to scroll down a bit more to that shade project and you can see everything is listed there along with a nice project map at the bottom that you can see here. We will update our project to reflect this Bronte, uh, when Drea gets back from vacation, we'll go ahead and complete that project page so you'll see everything there. You'll find it at TGBE20. Let me remove that one so you see me now. Um, so that's everything. Um, I hope you folks love it as much as I do. I'm going to put this on now. I think I'm going to wear it. I'm going to a concert tonight. So uh, this will be good concert wear, I think. Let's stack that Bronte with the Laura. You get that on. These magnetic clasps really click. They're really good. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, uh, both of these uh, were not glued into place. Thank you for reminding me. Um, you know, this, uh, uh, this stays really nicely. If you feel like it's sliding a bit, you can put just a touch of glue underneath, but I don't think you're going to need it. Um, Terry, you're asking a great question here. Is there a reference for shadows showing what size beads they would go with? You know, if you go, let me add the, the, uh, the website to the stream again. Let me go to the shadows here. Uh, let me go to shop. Let me go to beads and gems. Let me go to metal beads. And whoops, I bypassed it. Let me go to metal beads. Shadows. See, shadows is a selection. And let's just click on one. Little shadows, the antique brass. If you scroll through, can you see here there's a photo there on all of the shadows pictures that tells you exactly what the size of the beads are. The little, the regular, the big, the queen and the king, plus the inside hole diameter. So hopefully, <clears throat> pardon me, that'll help you uh, uh, figure that out. The little shadows uh, uh, match eight aught seed beads and the regular shadows match a six aught seed bead. So I hope that's helpful. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, don't worry. And I'm glad you love the project. Worried about the beading. You know what? 
don't worry. It's only beating, right? Do a little practice, um, a little practice um, tube of beads, right? Then all you do is cut it up and start again, right? No one's judging you. No one's watching you. Give yourself permission to play, okay? So, um, folks, thank you so much for joining us today on the Great Bead Extravaganza, the beadshop.com version. You know, all of you watching out there, and I can't say it enough, right? We really, really appreciate your support of our small businesses, our small business, and the small businesses that all make up this Great Bead Extravaganza collective. Um, we uh, will have the 20 millimeter uh, is coming. The colors that Janice and I chose, Janice has gotten a lot of really great tips from all of you, um, from all of you saying what colors you want. So we will add a second round. Don't you worry. Metallics, people said. Uh, people wanted turquoise. People wanted a cream color. So don't worry. We'll get it in for you. Sign up for our newsletter, friends, so that you will always stay in touch and know there I am, and know uh, what's coming up on beadshop.com. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email. We try and email you back right away, except on weekends, because we don't usually work on Saturday and Sunday. Um, we've got to rest sometimes, maybe. And uh, we'll get back to you and help you navigate to find what you need. Uh, don't forget all of those social shares. We'd love to see you uh, if you do any projects or uh, make things with products from beadshop.com. Give us a shout out on social at beadshop.com and we'll share you in our stories. Uh, we'd love to see you on the socials. And um, that's it for me. So join me every Wednesday and Friday on the beadshop.com socials for my broadcast at 10.30 a.m. Pacific. I always have something cooking up for you folks. Have a fantastic rest of your TGBE friends. Coming up after me is the OG of the bead world, Jill McKay. Jill has a fantastic uh, project for you today, and I know I can't wait to watch it for sure. I'm going to try and work on uh, a new entrance for uh, the Fall Fest so I can make as fancy of an entrance as Candy Cooper does. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you again so much for your support, and I'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>